want to thank the students again on Wednesday night when we set that record with the student attendance. And Mike just told Mike Mobley just told me that we um, at our tenth game of ten thousand plus, which is another school record. And um, we don't win this game without the fans tonight. I mean, we we just don't. I mean, we uh, it was a game. Momentum was up for grabs so much inside of this game. And we were rolling, obviously, and then all of a sudden the fouls, and it's like the air went out of the building. The air went out of us at the end of the first half. And, and um, we regrouped, and it was a game of runs. It was a game of adjustments. Um, exciting game, you know, trying to figure out different things. But at the end of the day, when we had to get the stops, all right, and we had to get the finishes, our crowd went to another level. And that's the way it's been all year. That is the way it's been all year, and um, that that's what you envision when 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 you have a when you have a desire to build a program. You envision fans doing that with you, and I can't thank them enough. I really can't. As far as the game, um, I'll answer any question you have. We, we that, that is a high high level team that we play. Extremely well coached. I told Eric after the game. I mean, it was an education preparing for him, and I've I've, I've respected Eric for a long long time, and is is. Father, even though I only met him once or twice, I looked at as uh, one of the great coaches that ever coached basketball. And Eric is, um, Eric is a tremendous coach. And and the way they play and the way he's gotten those those guys to play is is, is very very hard to defend. And um, we wanted to get zoned when they were beating us off the dribble, but that three that Isaiah Joe took and missed with the range that he took it from, I said it's just a matter of time before he hits that. We've got to live with, we've got to guard this, we've got to live with this because they've got to guard us on the other end. But we got a lot of good ball from a lot of guys. I wish I'd have got Anthony out in the first half. I told him when I took him out in the second, that was my fault because I, I, he, he was running on fumes at that point. He doesn't agree with that, but, it, but at the same time, I knew we were going to need him for the stretch run, and I should have gotten him blow in the first half, especially with the way the momentum of the game was changing. But we got a lot of ball from a lot, a lot of really good ball from a lot of guys, and Rayshon had a tremendous game. I don't want to miss anybody. Tyree Crump. Um, it was very, very fitting for him to have the game that he had with the way that he has tried to help lead this team. Same with Jordan Harris the last couple of days. And those guys know that, that, that we were down to two home games. And uh, they played like they were going to leave it all out there. And uh, so Tamani, again, just steady as can possibly be in so many areas. I, again, I don't want to miss anybody and I don't want to miss your questions. But very, very proud of the effort. Very proud of the belief that these guys continue to have. And uh, the way that they persevered when it when it looked like we may we may get the tide swung the other way. Coach, can you talk about what we saw in Isaiah Joe, Mason Jones, and Anthony Edwards, and then and Tyree makes maybe the biggest. Well, those are high level guards. I mean, I think that's why. I mean, there's probably 20 NBA teams here tonight. I mean, it, it, those are high level guards, and and to me, um, they're different, um, but. Jones is so good, and we didn't want to let him go right the way that he was going right. And he, and he was beating us with his right hand. He was beating us with his left hand. He's hard to guard. And we had we had some things that we wanted to do in the game. At times we were able to do them. It was good. But then other times we got um, where we had the wrong switch. It wasn't that we were it wasn't that we were discombobulated. We just had maybe the wrong guy on him at that time based on the actions that they were running. Eric does a phenomenal job of getting the matchup that he wants. And, and um, he, he's coached that way for a long, long time. He coached that way in the NBA, he coached that way in the CBA, he coached that way in Nevada, and he's coaching that way at Arkansas. He's masterful at it. And he's got some really good guys can get downhill and play, but we had some too. And so they had to guard ours too. And again, I thought when Anthony went back in the game, uh, after getting him out there in the second half, we never, uh, he never lost stride inside of that. So um, a lot of hard <coughs> players on the court tonight, definitely. Coach, you've won three out of the last four, and the other one was an overtime loss. So what do you think has been the biggest difference during these four games? Well, I, I use the term, and I know a lot of coaches use it, but it, it, sometimes you can lose sight of it. the process, right? Well, if you're in a process, you've got to make progress in it. And I think that's what these guys are doing. And we can never lose sight of the fact that progress has got to be made in practice. Progress has got to be made in how we study film. Progress has got to be made in our – X's no schemes, you know, whatever it is, progress has got to be made. And when you have a young team, you start to focus on two or three things and maybe you get that in the game. Well, maybe you didn't spend as much time as these two or three things, then all of a sudden it looks like you never spent any time on it, right? And I think we're starting to work through some of that, right? Whether there's a little more experience of things, we're spending so much time trying to get situational basketball down for these guys, whether it's the opponent, whether it's what we're trying to run, whether it's what we're trying to come out of a timeout with, you know, the movement, those type of things, that sometimes 
we lose that ability to just, okay, let's just play free. And sometimes you got to figure out, okay, we got to let them play free. But now if we're, if we're overstepping that, now we've got to bring it back and we've got to make sure we're getting the right shot, depending on where the game is. I think that's another area that we're making strides in. Because a couple of weeks ago, we lose to Texas A&M and South Carolina, and we gave them 50 points in turnovers. And we only had 13. That's a huge, those things are starting to turn for us. And we've got to continue to do that. We've got to deliver the basketball on time, on target. Our guys are doing a better job with some of the fundamental things that we try to really spend a lot of time with in practice. So the twice with other holders, so the last that they cut the lead to one, mm -hmm. both times you guys answered it. Yeah, Keith Stone and Tyree hit that three. Just the exposure, I guess, that your team kept it at that point in time. I'm very proud of him, right? I mean, the, the ball was moving. Uh, Anthony played with his head up. He really did. Um, he scored. Um, he, he passed the ball. He got to the rim. Uh, settled a few times, but that happens. But, but he played with his eyes up. And I think when you're, when you're doing that, the way, when he adds that, consistently to his game of playing with his eyes up, not just here and there, but eyes up and being able to see and be able to make those decisions like that, that's another level for him. And um, we ask a lot of him, and I hope nobody's losing sight of how much progress he's making. I said this on the radio, I mean, when, you, when you're when ranked like he is, and when you have the expectation level that he is, there is nowhere to go but down. I mean, there is no, truly, I live this with Cody Zeller, there's nowhere to go but down in the eyes of the public when you're ranked that high. Well, you know what? He's going up. I mean, he's getting better all the time. And he's getting better at so many different things. And today, he persevered and he bounced back a couple of times in that game and made a huge difference. Talking about that first half momentum, you went down the list of players a little bit, but can you talk a little bit more about how Rashawn specifically kind of put those 17 points in mind to that momentum? Well, I, he was really ready to play. I mean, the coaches were raving about how he was shooting the ball today in the walkthrough and raving about how he shot it yesterday. Shooting it. And, and um, he was ready to go. I mean, he knew. Uh, I didn't even have to remind him they were going to try to attack him defensively right today with the matchups. And, um, and uh, his, his mind was really sharp on the game plan, he was talking, um, he was ready to go. And the ball was moving, which is where it's gotta be for him. Um, we probably could have got it to him a couple more times in the first half based on some of the matchups that we had, that he had, uh, but he was really locked in. And, and, he, and he stepped it back up again. He was again running on fumes late and we got him back in and uh, he did a great job to help us close the game. Two more questions. <coughs> Coach, a few minutes left. It looked like Anthony and Mason Jones had they had their their battle going. And there was a call that it looked like it could have gone either way. It looked like Jones might have flopped and got a foul. What, what did you say to Anthony to, to keep him poised? Because he was visibly frustrated by that call. It appeared. Oh, next play, right? And 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 it's just a matter of making eye contact. It took a little bit longer to get that eye contact. Um, next play and take a breath, right? And uh, take a deep breath. I actually saw him do it because we'd set a play up for him to go and he was gonna come off double staggers uh, out of the corner. And um, he just needed to regroup. You know, and it's, he actually, for that age, it's really amazing how quickly he can regroup. He really can. And um, that's a trait that I hope he never loses because it's, it's hard to have that. And to have that at his age and, and be able to get back to base, you know, or get back to the level that he's gotta be at, that, that's, a, that's a hard thing because he's competing, he's playing, and uh, it's intense, it's hot, you know, it's, it's all those different things. And um, that, that's, that's innate, but at the same time, you gotta teach him how important that is to get there. And I don't think he has any idea when I tell him that he has it, but someday he'll figure that out. And that'll be one of the things that really helps make him a great, great player. Tell so you guys shot nearly 57%, uh, but is it nice to have a guy like Kamara? Really look at this. Timonia, 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 in terms of his work on the offensive glass. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 he was active. I mean, that's what he's been. I mean, he's going to be such a good player in a sense. He does so many, we're not big, right? I mean, we're not a big team, so he's got to do a lot of different things. We're never going to get away from switching here if we can help it. But we've had to have guys that have, we're asking them to do a lot size-wise that they wouldn't normally have to do if we were a bigger team. And so with that being said, how quick he is, how active he is, he's like a Swiss Army knife, you know, in the sense of what he, different things he can bring to the table. But he can really move his feet, he, he's got great wiggle and the sense of with the hips and he can change direction quickly. And when, the, when it comes with the ball, eventually it's, he's gonna be a phenomenal driver, you know, when that day comes. But right now he does it more or less without the ball and then he can get on the glass, he can slither in, get a tip dunk or, or things like that. So he's getting better and better.